no. It's doing this. I guess I got to switch to. Um, and are you? Yeah. Moving? So now we got it. Why is it not? Oh, it's just a delay. Yeah. All right. I, I'll start and I'll swing around. I don't, yeah. I don't know. All righty, folks. Uh, here we are again at TGI Zeppelin. And indeed, it is a Friday. Uh, it's a lot of things happening this weekend. We hope you'll be enjoying everything as much as we do. Today's Passover. This weekend is Easter. We have the uh, Japanese Cherry Blossom Festival going on in lovely San Francisco. And just a lot of good stuff. Um, but today's good stuff is helium, Zeppelin helium. So my name is Ken Ibrahim, and I work uh, here at Zeppelin at the headquarters. And I don't know if you can see, I've got my snazzy, uh, uh, there's a delay. But anyway, I have my snazzy um, hoodie on today. Wow, there is a lot of delay. OK, so anyway, um, and I happen to be here. Um, with my friend Moon, my friend and yours. Hi. Hi, Moon. Hi. OK. So today, as I said, we're going to talk about uh, Zeppelin Helium. And basically, Helium is a pluggable JavaScript package for custom visualizers. So before we actually get into the main presentation itself, uh, we'd like to ask Moon a little bit about it, because he was obviously instrumental in its creation. Now, Moon, as far as I understand, uh, Helium came out of a hackathon of sorts? Uh, yeah, we, we, we do uh, one or two times a year mm -hmm. um, kind of development camp in, in our company. And Helium came, uh, is developed uh, from one of our development camp okay. in the winter, I think. And uh, the motivation of the Helium uh, is uh, Zeppelin have a built-in visualizations, and mm -hmm. a lot of users wanted to have more visualizations, like right. a, uh, a map uh, map chart or different types of chart. And uh, with that, uh, instead of uh, trying to implement all of the chart in in the Zeppelin project, why don't we make it uh, pluggable so user mm -hmm. can extend uh, the charts themselves, so uh, there can be more uh, more charts, and user have some uh, flexibility of having their own uh, own chart. Right. And plus, we wanted to have a, a online registry. Mm -hmm. So if user wants, then they they can publish and share their charts uh, with other users. That that was the initial thought. Yeah. The and motivation. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was the motivation, and uh, that became an uh, implementation of the Helium. All right, that's great. So um, Zeppel already can take advantage of different third-party uh, visualizers via JavaScript, right? But the idea behind this is it kind of it turns it into a package manager, so it's easy to encapsulate it, distribute it, uh, and have it added to the visualizer bar, right, when you choose right. to enable it. Right. So Zeppelin, uh, inside of Notebook, any you can actually use any JavaScript mm -hmm. and draw some uh, chart or any visualization there. But those are, I think that that's powerful feature mm -hmm. and flexible. But you need to code. You need to yeah. uh, write JavaScript, and that they are usually not reusable, not easily reusable. Okay. The input format can be. Different, yeah. so you cannot use just copy and paste, mm -hmm. and you cannot expect that run. Yeah, but uh, Helium visualization is a, uh, it's inside of a Helium framework, so mm -hmm. um, it, it's connected with Zeppelin's uh, display system. So right. any any table data uh, output will be uh, can be an input of any Helium visualization. Right, and so. Any and we're going to demo a little bit of that today. Right. right. So any paragraph can be used uh, the same visualization over and over again. Got it. Yeah. Great. Okay. Shall we dive into it? Yeah. 
Okay, so um, I'm going to swing this back a little bit this way. So what we're going to do is just start off by showing a couple of different sample uh, visualizers that come prepackaged with helium or yeah with Zeppelin when you download it in the helium uh, area. So uh, let me switch here and uh, let's see. I'm going to go through uh, where it is. Chrome, see the other window, actually not that one, okay, uh, I see, okay, so here we have the main um, Zeppelin interface page, which you're all familiar with, I'm assuming most people watching today are already Zeppelin users. Um, so what I've done is I've created a sample notebook here called Helium Bundled Visualizers. And I've preloaded some data and uh, some charts to have a look at. So today we're going to have a look at a couple. The first one is a heat map chart. So this is pretty interesting. Um, we can display, we're using uh, some, some information about uh, people and whether they're what their marital status is, their education level, uh, and and uh, what their average balance is. We'll see how the how people are doing money wise here. Um, so here's kind of a, an example of the uh, the chart, which is interactive. You can see as I move over the um, uh, the cells, we're getting some data about that. Now the idea being that once you install these um, these visualizers, they will appear as new icons up in the icon bar. Uh, for the visualizer and running, for instance, a SQL query will produce this uh, the uh, visualizer bar for you. If we want to see what the different visualizers are that are available, uh, we can come here and go to the Helium menu. So hopefully, can everyone see this? Yeah, you should be able to see that. So then I've already have that tab open. I'm going to switch to it here. Well, then I already have that tab open. Wow, I can hear myself. Um, so here we can see a list of the different, <laughs> yeah, just fun in the office, folks. I'm listening to myself now. So um, we have a list of visualizers here, and we can click on any of them and get, uh, it'll take us to a page that describes them. So let's see, we have something like, um, one of the ones we're going to show is the ultimate heat map chart. If I were to open that in a new tab, uh, this will give me a description uh, of what the uh, the visualizer is. Uh, most visualizers have kind of a pre-recorded video here describing or showing, demonstrating its usage. So that's good. Then you can choose once you've decided you'd like to utilize one of those, uh, you can just choose to enable it here. So for the sake of today's demo, I've already enabled a few different visualizers. So I'll come back. So of course, the first one we are looking at is the heat uh, heat map chart. So you've seen this, but what we can do is open up the settings area. And when we open up the settings, oh, sorry, actually it was already open. I need to open up the charts, uh, like subregion there. These are the different fields we have available to us to display. So if I were to change some of these, let's say um, instead of marital and education, uh, we could do maybe age and job, we'll get something. So now you'll see how the graph dynamically updates to give us that type of dynamic information as well. And this has three different axes. The Z axis is displayed down on the bottom, which is going over the, uh, spanning the range of, uh, of salaries or balances, I guess, in the bank. So we'll try one other combination. Let's say, uh, do something else where we can see on the Z axis, the education level, uh, on the, uh, let's see, x-axis, we can do marital status, and on the y-axis, uh, let's do age. Now we get something a little different. This almost looks like a DNA kind of a, a display here. So I think whoever this represents in the end is going to have a good long life here. Okay, uh, especially the married ones in the middle. So that's an example of a heat uh, chart. And the other thing is very cool is something called a bubble chart. And there are different versions of this, but this one is particularly interesting. We start off with a uh, kind of a circular configuration here of bubbles representing different data. 
And let's uh, switch this from collecting them all uh, into the center area to sorting them by group. And in this case, again, we're looking at marital status. So it's the same data set being uh, viewed with a different visualizer, in this case, a bubble visualizer. So that's a pretty cool animation uh, effect there. So maybe we could change uh, some of these parameters as well. But what I wanted to point out was that this visualizer was, I think, built as well by Moon. So good job, Moon. It's pretty cool. Um, do we want to try a few different uh, combinations? Do you, do you have a combination that you like, or is this your favorite combo of parameters there? Oh, I, I, I don't have much of my uh, favorite combination. OK. Yeah. But this this one is the idea of this uh, visualization is borrowed from I forgot the name but uh, famous uh, famous people famous famous guy uh -huh. who actually built this visualization on uh, on New New York Times or some other uh, some other area and I, okay. I just borrowed the idea and implemented it in uh, with uh, these three. I say yes, I think. So you use D3 behind the scenes for this one? Yeah. OK. Yeah, so this uh, visualization demonstrates uh, capability of a Helium framework. So you can mm -hmm. use uh, D3 uh, library or any other type of library that you like to use okay. to, build, to build your own visualization. OK, great. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so that was an example of a couple of different um, pre-built visualizers that you can uh, that you can uh, enable from within Zeppelin. So what I'd like to do now is uh, move on and let's see here. I'll move on to um, this uh, kind of a hello world example. And of course, programmers always like to start with a hello world for any new programming language or platform they're going to start experimenting with. So we're going to do the same. So I'm new to, to uh, Helium myself, and I have to admit it's been a long time since I've uh, coded in JavaScript. Uh, for me, it's been mainly Python for the last so many years. So uh, I had to get back up to speed in order to, uh, to do this presentation. So let's see how this goes. So bear with me. But what I wanted to point out before I dive into this aspect of the, uh, of the demo is that Helium uh, requires three different files in two different locations on disk. Uh, the first location is once you've installed Helium locally, uh, there's a Helium subdirectory. And uh, I'm not sure whether I had to create that manually or whether it was already there. But uh, I think I might have created it. But anyway, um, one of the files is a visualizer definition JSON file that you'll need to put there in order for the system to recognize your visualizer. Uh, there are two other files that go into whatever or wherever you created your development directory. Uh, so in my case, I'll, I'll, I'll show you where I've put that. I have a, a dev subdirectory in my documents folder. I'm on a, on a MacBook Pro, so Mac OS. Um, and those two files are the actual source code for your visualizer, uh, as well as a package definition JSON file. Um, now, <clears throat> the other thing Moon pointed out to me before I really got started with this, which was uh, very helpful, is um, and this is also in the documentation you'll see online, is to run in dev mode. And the reason you want to run in dev mode is to, as you're coding, kind of to debug your code and to, and to see the effects of what you're doing, uh, you can get pretty quick, um, uh, pretty quick response by just refreshing the browser when you're in dev mode. So that's what we're going to do uh, going forward. Um, in order to get into dev mode, I've listed the command here. You just run npm run and then dev colon helium, and that will start the development mode. So uh, without further ado, we're going to start um, development mode, and we are going to get into it here. So let me go back to my shell. And so we already have helium running. I don't need to demonstrate that. Uh, I think all of you do that all many times a day. Uh, I just happen to make my own little uh, aliases, z start and z stop, instead of typing out the whole command to run the daemon and stop it. So um, Let's see here. I'm now going to run the command I just mentioned to start uh, dev mode. But before I start dev mode, I think I'm going to disable the other visualizers before we get going on our own. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right. Moon, Moon uh, agrees with me on that one. So in fact, I'm just going to disable everything I've got here so far. And hopefully, this will work. 
Uh, good. I have this one. And I think I've got one more. Let me check the exhaustive check here. There it is. Okay. So I've disabled those. I just want to start fresh and from a clean slate. So now that I've done that, I'm actually, I've started the development uh, server. So I'm going to switch from localhost port 8080 to port 9000. So I just happen to have that there. Uh, I think I had started that. Oh, I haven't started it yet. So there you go. I need to start that. Get into dev mode. And take some moments. And there we go. So now we know we're in dev mode. I can switch back. I can reload. And voila. Uh, I'm back to the page. That's my limited French. Uh, we have a couple of French employees working with us. So uh, we, we our hearts go out to them for the Notre Dame uh, fire. But apparently, they've claimed they're going to rebuild it even better. So that's good. OK. Um, so now I'm just going to start a create a new notebook. And I will call this, uh, let's say, say, again, I have one already, but Helium de Demo, if I can spell correctly, with Moon. And I guess I'll just keep it a Spark notebook. OK, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my code editor. Um, let's see, get to the right window. So this I'm just going to kind of walk us through. Um, but what I will do now is uh, I'll, I'll go first actually to my, um, my development area. So I have a, um, let's see, is that working? OK. So I think we can see that, yeah. So I created a development area in my documents dev area called Zeppelin. And inside of that, I've created a Helium dev subdirectory. So this is where I'm storing my actual source code. So I've done a couple of tests in preparation for the demo. But uh, let's see, I'm going to create a new one called, uh, let's just call it uh, demo. I'll call it demo, uh, demo visor. All right. I'll just CD in there. OK, and if I um, with that done, I'll come back to the code editor. I'll create a new file. And I will call save this. Uh, and I'll switch to, let's see, Helium Dev. I'll go to there. Let's see, was it there? Yeah. And demo visor.js. I'll save that out. And now we can start coding uh, our JavaScript visualizer. Now, because Hello World is so simple, I'm just going to copy the code from here, paste it in. Now I'll just change the name of the class. So uh, this Hello World example is also documented online. So we're going to start with this, and then we're going to expand on it to do a little bit more, um, I wouldn't say complicated, but just a slightly more involved uh, demo, which show some cool features you can do relatively quickly. So I'm going to change the name of my class here to uh, Demo Visor. Save that. And um, so we see what we're doing here. In order to create the visualizer, we're importing a couple of different uh, classes here. And we're subclassing from that. So in this case, we are creating a visualization type uh, visualizer. There are a couple of others, which you may have seen in the, uh, in, in the site which were spell, and there's an interpreter type, and so forth. But we're not going to be uh, discussing that today. Today, we're going to go over visualizers. So we're, uh, we're subclassing visualization, the visualization class. So this is all kind of boilerplate for the most part. The one thing of note uh, uh, here in the constructor is that we're going to use this pass-through transformation class. And basically, the pass-through transformation is the simplest transformation we have. 
when we're not really uh, interested in doing any kind of editing or modification to the data that's coming in through the paragraph into the visualizer, we might just want to display other data. And that's what we're going to be doing here uh, during the course of a relatively simple demo to get people going. So, uh, so we have this pass-through variable we've created here. And then we have a number of different uh, methods in the class that, uh, that we can override. And by overriding those, we achieve the visualization. So the two most important ones are the ones listed here, which are render and get transformation. In the case of get transformation, in this case, I'm just going to literally pass through this pass through variable without doing anything to the data. So we're not, we're not transforming the data in any way. All I'm interested in doing is rendering something. So I can see some new data, uh, graphics, and whatnot in the paragraph where the visualizer is running. So <clears throat> let's see. So in this case, I'm just going to literally print hello world. And we're going to print it via the HTML uh, method in here. So I don't have any tags yet. That's what we're going to start building on uh, for, the, uh, for the next demo right after this. But I just want to show how this works. So we just have a string saying hello world. And we're going to pass that to the HTML renderer. So, uh, so that's saved. Now, there's the other two files that I have to create. So um, let's see. So the next file that uh, belongs in this directory is the package file, the package.json file. So I'm going to create another new file here. And I'm going to say, let's see, save this. Uh, save as, as the demo visors. This is the correct directory. I'm going to call this package.json. And again, I'm going to copy over uh, the contents from the hello world. Uh, nope, that's the wrong file. Let me do this again. <clears throat> uh, here we go. OK, so this is the, uh, uh, the package file that, that describes our, um, our visualizer for the package manager. Right, Moon? Yep. Yeah. OK. So I'm using VS Code here. And as you see, as I hover over the uh, the fields here in the JSON file, actually has some descriptors as to what they should be. So in this case, uh, the name of my file is demo visor, and I'm just going to say for now this is a simple. Well, let's just say this is a a simple demo visualizer. It's version one. Now this is the main entry point to the. Um, uh, to the to the actual file name on disk, I believe. So this should also just be demo visor. That's my name, the author, uh, licensed to us at Zeppel, version uh, Zeppel 1.0. And you just have to make sure that for dependencies, uh, you have these two different uh, libraries here: table data and viz. Right. So I'm going to save that. So if I go back uh, to disk here, we now have the two different files we need. Uh, on our development side. Now we have left the third file, which goes into the Helium subfolder uh, that alerts the system to the presence of the, uh, of the Visualizer plugin. So for that, I'm going to create one more new file. Uh, and this file, I'll save it. Um, this will have the same name as the actual uh, Visualizer. So demo visor, dot, and it's a JSON file. But I need to store this now. Um, in uh, the Helium uh, subfolder. So I'll go to Applications. I have this under Zeppelin. This is my actual uh, download install, Zeppelin 081. Uh, I've just made a, a soft link to it here. So if I want to do other versions, it'll always be soft link to the latest. Um, so I'll go ahead and save this under the Helium directory, which is here. So I'll go ahead and save that demo-visor.json, OK? And then, uh, I'll, again, I'll copy the other data, bring it in here. And this is, again, for the, for the actual, for Zeppelin itself to recognize this visualizer. So it's instructing it as to what type it is, in this case, a visualization as opposed to a spell or interpreter. Uh, in this case, it's demo visor. But what I've discovered here in this name field, we can't have any spaces. It'll bulk if you have spaces. Um, but all this data is what you're going to see in the Helium uh, section of the web page in Zeppel. 
So I was trying to do this without a space, but it didn't work. So I just put an underscore. Uh, and then again, I'll just, um, well, I can just go back to here, copy this string. Um, that I created uh, during TGI Zeppelin with Moon. So that's the description. Again, we have the license. Now the artifact is the actual file here. So um, this will be again, demo visor, but without the file name extension. And then we can choose which icon from the uh, font awesome font library. <clears throat> In this case, I'm gonna give it uh, fa-font for an icon that looks like the letter A for a font, and I'll save that file. So I think we've created the three files for the basic visualizer, and we should be ready to go and hopefully see it, excuse me, in the browser. So first of all, what I'll do is I'll come back here. I'll open, oh, let me close that. I'll reopen the Helium page. It loads up. And now we see here, uh, we have our new uh, visualizer that's listed as type visualization. Basically everything you see here in this entry is uh, from the last file that I created uh, that was in the Helium subdirectory. So we have the, the name, the type, uh, the, the, the artifact or location on disk and the uh, description that I wrote. Here is the uh, font awesome font icon that you see next to it with the A there. Okay, so now what I should be able to do is just enable this. So let's see, we'll enable it. Again, a lot of the same information. We click OK. It's enabled. So now what I'll do is I'll come back. Um, and what I wanted to do, let me, let me go and grab some data first. Uh, let me come back to here. I'll just copy that. Uh, actually, let me delete this and recreate that. So I create a new one. In this case, I'm, I'll, I'll just call it again. Let's see, uh, demo, demo uh, visor with moon. I'll make it a Python notebook because I prefer to use Python. So now I'll Go ahead and I'll load this data set. Maybe I can make the font a little larger here. So that's finished. If we now come down, uh, let's see, I'll make this as well larger. We see that we have data here that's been loaded. This external reference is just to a website of mine. Um, so that's where I'm pulling the data from. So I'll go ahead and hide the output there. So now what we wanna do is you wanna run a SQL command on it. So we can do SQL and then, actually let me see what information was I wanting to pull out. Let's see here. Oh, actually, yeah, I don't even need to pull out. I just wanna show everything. So I'll just, I'll go ahead and just show it. So with our handy resource pool, um, did that work? There we go. So now we have the, um, the visualizer bar there, but for some reason, let's see, my visualizer is not appearing. Yeah, one, one quick tip is yeah. uh, after uh, in, enable any visual, visualization from yeah. the Helium menu, uh, browser need to be refreshed uh, uh, at once. Okay, yeah. just refresh this. Yeah. That's still okay. It's um, still not appearing. Uh, should I disable and re-enable it? Uh, I think uh, you can try that, but I I think there uh, there are hmm. something missing. There. Okay. Well, this is why it's good to have Moon nearby. Um, uh, should I stop either of the processes and rerun them? Uh, 
Yeah, that's a, what you can do. But first, yeah. uh, we can check uh, load files and also we can check if there are any uh, typo uh, on the, for example, in the main entry name and class yeah. name. So okay. Double check. So let's do that first. Let's have a quick double check. So this is a good debugging session. Um, and this is how we learn. So uh, let's see. Um, I'll close the ones we don't need. Uh, OK, so here's one. So that's the name. All of this, I think, appeared properly. Helium dev demo visor. So let's double check the directory, make sure that we have the right uh, file there. Or uh, yep. So helium demo visor, demo visor.js. So that's correct. Oh, you know what? I see the problem. I misspelled the file name. There you go. So I'm gonna. Let's see now. I, I I had spelled it with an S instead of a Z. So there you go. So let's see now if I demo visor deleted from disk. Let me reopen that. Uh, um, I will go back to my dev directory. My uh, uh, Helium Dev Demo Visor. Okay, so here it is again. So let's see if that will correct it. Do I need to refresh again, Moon? Do you think, or? Uh, I think you can uh, disable, disable and enable, and because of when you click enable, that will uh, Zeppelin will try to build your uh, visualization project. So My God. Okay, so let's try this again. Re-enable. OK, that looks good. Let's try refreshing. Oh, no, still not there. Well, this is interesting. Of course, this is a demo, so something will always happen. So let's see. So I had that, that. Uh, let's make sure within the file, that's demo visor. I don't have anything else. Uh, that I think looks good. Demo Pfizer JSON. Did you see some? Oh, look at that. I copy and pasted. Good one. So the same uh, spelling mistake. There, I have to go back to school. All right, let's try this. Oh, I got to disable and re enable. But at least this is a fairly quick process. And we thank dev mode in, in part for that. Now it's actually taking a little bit longer, which is a good sign. Yeah. It's always good to be patient and wait a little bit for the right thing to happen. So now let's hope uh, that we'll see the little A. Um, OK. Uh, Interesting. Maybe I should restart the, the uh, oh. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the A. Here it is. So now we have uh, added this uh, visualizer here. You can see it's called Demo Visor. So of course, the next step is to uh, see whether it will work. So I have this data set, and if I click A, Sure enough, there's our hello world. Um, and so that's all the plugin is doing, is printing that uh, in the paragraph. We're not doing anything with the data. OK, so the next step is uh, let's start playing around, not with the data itself, but let's just extract a couple of different uh, bits of information from the data. Um, and uh, see uh, how we can. Uh, not only present information about the data frame, but also add some of our own settings to, uh, to change the visual display of that information. So I'm going to go back and open up, because I'm going to do some more code copying. Uh, let's see. 
Helium dev. I'm going to come back to here. Okay, so um, so we're going to change what's happening uh, for one thing in the render uh, method. The other thing we're going to change is we're going to add uh, something to allow us to alter the settings area. So currently, back in the browser, this hello world example. There's nothing in the settings. So this is what we're going to also add, a few interesting settings here, and play with some kind of CSS styling to alter the way that the text looks. So let's start off by, uh, we'll just go and copy some of this code. Um, so actually, before I do that, uh, yeah, I guess we can do it in that order. So here is the new return, uh, the new method we have to override. I'll just put it down here. Get rid of my comment. This is as I'm developing things. OK. Uh, then what we're going to do now, and this is what Moon explained, which is very cool is that in order to create the different settings, the widgets in the settings, because this is, uh, you know, in the end, kind of HTML, JavaScript based, you can use an Angular template to produce the whatever set of controls you want, radio buttons, check boxes, text fields. Uh, we're even going to do something with color here, which is kind of fun. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's see here. I'm just going to do a little bit at a time to kind of go through some things. Um, so let's start off with that. So we'll start creating this template. And we'll just need here. Uh, oops. We can start off with a very simple setting. We're going to create one um, text field, which is uh, the where we can set the size of the text. Now, back in our render area, um, we're going to make an equivalent, uh, some equivalent updates. So I'm going to start off by going through this uh, top block. OK, so what I'm doing here is I'm basically just going to create a very simple system to kind of uh, build up via string concatenation um, some styling information for the text that we're going to render. So to start off, I just want to make a, I just want to center the text so I have that currently. And I've kind of separated each of the styling uh, directives into different variables so I can just kind of concat them together. So here's the first one. Um, I'll get rid of that for now. Let's just focus on this. The style uh, text size variable I've created is to determine the, the size of the font. Uh, and so what we're going to do is um, the other thing I need to do is set up this config uh, object here. And so the idea being that we'll set, we'll create the settings via the template. Uh, whenever you change those, there's a callback that happens that then stores that resultant settings value into this config object that we can then pull in any other uh, method in the, uh, in the um, visualizer code. So the one we want to create is text size. So if I come back here, we have this scope uh, down here. Hold on a second. OK. Scope. Speaking of which, I could probably use some mouthwash just about now. But uh, let's see. OK. So down at the bottom of the template, um, And then and I'm missing a uh, comma and end quote, I guess, there. Uh, that card, I need to add something else in there. The end of the div. All right. Don't forget your divs, folks. OK. OK, so now we have a, a chunk of the template, and we have the, uh, the scope related to that template. And via that scope, we're going to end up setting the config uh, object. In this case, with a, um, a text input field, 
which we can see is um, actually I set it to a number because it's going to do some auto field validation for us. I have a default value, um, and then we have um, the actual config uh, uh, attribute that we want to store that in. Um, so let's go ahead and see whether this will work. So we've got the uh, get settings method defined. We have the render setting. Okay, now we actually have to still produce the um, the resultant string we want, which we're going to do down here. So let me copy that over. And dump that back. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to um, go ahead and construct the different, uh, the message we want to display, which in the end is just going to be the number of rows and the number of columns from the, uh, the data uh, frame that we have in the paragraph. So the other thing I'll point out is that um, uh, the render uh, method is passed a table data uh, variable or another object here, and that contains um, information, actually contains the data frame, right? So in this case, I can go and I can get the length of the, of the rows in the data frame and the length of the columns, and I'm just going to spit that out instead of the string hello world. And then I'm going to style it a little bit already as uh, H3 headers, uh, and then with the style rows and style columns variables, so far I'm uh, I'm just setting text alignment to be centered, and it's going to pull from the config to determine what the size is. So let's see if this will work. I save that. I'll come back here, and let me open that up. There's nothing yet. If I refresh, let's see. This one has to take a moment. So while it's refreshing, oh, it's already refreshed. OK, let me close that. Uh, actually, no, not close it. Um, hmm, OK, now it uh, seems something else is not quite correct. So since we're running out of time, um, I'm just going to copy the whole chunk of code that I've prepared, and we'll just see the whole thing work and give the uh, let you have a look. Um, Copy all of that. And uh, did I have the get transform in there? Yeah. Do, do, no, I got to copy that one back. OK. All right, so let's see. That should be hopefully correct. Um, so basically, I'll just kind of explain what I've done here. So I did what I obviously what I just did, but in addition to that, I've added some other settings. And what those settings are, if we scroll back up to look at the uh, template, not only do I have the text size, but I've added checkbox uh, to see if you want to use a drop shadow. Um, I've added another checkbox to see if you want to color the text. And if we do, I've set up a color field for uh, the number of rows and a color field for the number of columns as well. So I've saved that. Let's come back again and try refreshing. And hopefully, the view we see will be refreshing. What do you think so far, Moon? Was it worth yeah. developing Helium? <laughs> OK, so here we go. So folks, we have, uh, we're set to the demo visor. Um, visualizer and now we have text that you can see is centered and i've closed the settings again if i open it you'll see now we have a text size field text field we have these uh, check boxes and we have colors so let's set um set this to 50. i have to kind of uh reset focus to the field and now you'll see that now it's been set to a text size of 50 pixels so that's larger we can just Click the, uh, the little arrows up and down to make it bigger, make it smaller. Um, and now let's see, uh, we can use a drop shadow as well. So if I turn this one on, now we get the drop shadow. And in fact, what I'm doing is more of like an outer glow if you're in, uh, familiar with Photoshop. So it's not really a drop shot. I just want the whole thing to be surrounded in kind of a shadows, kind of a contact shadow, if you will. Uh, so we can toggle that on and off. The next thing we can do is say, hey, we want to use color. So I'll toggle this on. 
Both colors are currently black. So now that we have color enabled, I can actually click that to open a color field uh, picker. And let's see, what what colors would you like us to choose, Moon? Uh, Any favorites? Uh, red. Red, good. Okay, how about for the other one? Uh, blue. Red and blue, okay. Two of the primary colors here. So now you can see the red and blue. Um, and if I toggle that off, you can see that the color appears, disappears. Uh, we can turn the drop shadow on and off. There's color with no drop shadow, there's color with drop shadow. Again, we can change the, um, the scale. Let's try making it 100 and see what happens. This is going to really blow us out of the water. Wow, look at that. Okay, so that's, again, relatively simple example of uh, using a visualizer, but still, you can kind of see the power behind it. Um, and it's kind of cool. It's fun to do, uh, especially when you have little issues and then you work your way through them. So that's always good. So uh, let's see. just want to see if there's anything I didn't cover. So I mentioned that um, there's a table data object through which you can access the, uh, the data frame uh, in the paragraph that the visualizer will operate on. So we, we did the uh, extract of the number of rows and columns. Let me just make this larger here. Uh, we rendered as HTML. And the other thing we were able to do was to customize the config object. Uh, and that allowed us to create uh, and use settings. In this case, a, like a widget set that we could use to alter the display. OK. The last thing I'm going to point out is that once you're done with your visualizer, you've spent a good hour to maybe two weeks working on it, uh, you're ready to publish it. And publishing is pretty simple. Um, we're not going to do it here because it's so simple, but it takes a little while to see the result. But you basically just run NPM publish. And uh, as the note says here, uh, it'll appear in the directory within about an hour or so, and we don't want to keep you waiting for that. But basically, publishing is a very simple procedure. Uh, I did want to mention a few things about the setup that's required uh, to do visualization development. So the first thing you want to do is, because we want to use dev mode for relatively quick refreshing, for quick changes and updates uh, to confirm what your, what your code is doing, you actually need to download the Apache Zeppelin code base. So I've done that, and I, I put it in a, a particular area. Um, and then the other thing to do is to install, obviously, the NPM JavaScript package manager, because uh, everything is dependent on that. But once you've done that, you actually need to run NPM install from the Zeppelin-web subdirectory in your main Zeppelin install. Uh, not in the source code install, but in the main install. Lastly, uh, you need to have uh, JVM running. But actually, you need version 8. Don't go with version 12, which seems to be the latest, because uh, Helium does not seem to work with that. So there is a, a, a caveat for you. And I think with that, uh, we've pretty much wrapped up. And we want to say thank you from the Zeppel headquarters here in lovely San Jose, California. Um, but now we'd like to see whether we had any questions come in. Uh, oh, yes. All right. Um, so, Moon, I, I think we already did confirm that um, uh, that we can use any third-party visualizers, correct? Yes. OK. Um, yeah, OK, good. And I also was um, wondering, with the visualizers, I forgot to show something, but uh, another kind of small but cool aspect. Let's go and see if we can show it quickly, um, is that Let's see. Once we're in the the list, the Helium list pages, uh, list the visualizers, if I were to enable the different ones that I've created locally, which should enable relatively quickly, that as soon as you have more than uh, one um, uh, visualizer uh, loaded, the icons will appear in the top left I have two A's. They're both using the same, but Hello World is using the, I believe, the Wi-Fi icon. You can then go and rearrange the order. So you can order them in the way you'd like uh, for them to appear in the visualizer uh, bar that right. shows up. Uh, yeah. So I could do that, for instance, and that gives us a little bit more symmetry there. Right. I, I think I want to add it, uh, yeah. two, two more. Uh, 
uh, two little things. So yeah. One is uh, using a third party uh, visualization library or any other Java, JavaScript library. Mm -hmm. Helium opens some uh, some possibilities to include any uh, uh, any licenses. Uh, that means uh, if uh, without Helium, everything needs to be packaged into the Zeppelin source tree, and Zeppelin is a part of open source, so not every source can be packaged into the Zeppelin and distributed together. For example, or, uh, if any visualization library have a license or license that is not compatible with Apache 2, yeah. then we cannot include that into uh, Zeppelin's source tree. But okay. Helium uh, is an installing library on the fly. Yeah. And uh, when you install, let's say, a commercial uh, licensed uh, chart library, then you, of course, you will deal with it, uh, that commercial license. Uh -huh. So you can still uh, do that using uh, Helium uh, framework. OK, it's good to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, another one is when you uh, want to publish your uh, Helium package, mm -hmm. uh, you you have a you had a slide with it, uh, npm publish command, right? And that will actually uh, publish your visualization as a npm just regular npm package, okay? Uh, and publishes to npm registry, mm -hmm. and there is a, a, a Zeppelin project will. Uh, have a, uh, some transcript that uh, grab every NPM package that depends on uh, Zeppelin uh, data, uh, table data, or Zeppelin B's uh, NPM dependencies. So uh -huh. any new project coming or publishes to the NPM re registry that depends on Zeppelin's package, mm -hmm. that will, uh, Zeppelin will list uh, those packages in the Helium menu or Zeppelin's website. Okay. So that's how your package is published and other people, other users able to see your packages. Got it. OK. Yeah, I mean, that's great information. Thanks for sharing that with us. Um, so yeah, I mean, using Helium is, is pretty interesting. It's kind of a, a big world of possibilities um, once you get into it. And it's fun to create something uh, uh, that you, can be, you know, you'd be proud of. And it'd be fun then to share that with the world. So if anybody out there is interested in using Helium, please go ahead and then publish it for us so we can see what you've done. And I think uh, looks like we're about out of time here. So uh, is that is that good for today? You think we we've we've done Helium some form of justice here today? Yeah. All right. I mean, an all right from Moon is an is an all right. I think for all of us, <laughs> right? Okay. Let me. Um, to see. Okay, it looks like we've covered uh, any questions that have come in. So I think that's it. All righty. Yeah. Uh, signing out. And we'll see you in two weeks. We'll be sending out a, uh, a notification as to what the next topic is going to cover. And if anyone has anything they'd like to see uh, covered, please let us know. All righty. Bye.